Welcome back to Performance Max for Developers. My name is Devin, Developer Relations Engineer on the Google Ads API, and this is episode two in our series about assets. So before I dive in, just a friendly reminder, if you like the video, you find it useful, please, please hit that like button and subscribe to our channel uh, so you can stay up to date with all the latest video content. So with that, let's dive in. One of the biggest changes that Performance Max brings is the addition of this Google Ads asset library concept that we can draw from to link to assets instead of uploading assets for each individual ad that we're creating. This is the workflow that you might be used to if you've worked with other campaign types in the Google Ads uh, API platform. And like I just said, here you're adding a new asset for every single ad and campaign that you're creating. Well, if you're only using that asset once, probably not that big of an issue, but if you're going to be reusing that asset over and over again, it probably doesn't make sense to keep uploading it over and over again. For example, consider a logo for your business, right? That's something you're probably going to use in lots and lots of different ads. So why not just upload it once to your library and then we can attach it to each individual asset group in each individual campaign. And that way, when the Performance Max system goes to dynamically generate these ads for you, it'll just grab those logos for you. And we can take this a step further. You can actually attach to multiple asset groups within a different campaign. So you can separate those asset groups and have different assets based on the asset group. And in our later episode about asset groups, I'll explain to you why you might want to do that. With that, let's head on over to the interactive guide to take a quick look at the implementation details. Here I am in the interactive guide and I'm on the assets section here. I went through this in the previous episode, but our basic workflow begins with just creating assets. Now, keep in mind, you don't have to do all of this consecutively. You might have a completely separate workflow in your application for creating assets. And then later on, you can have an independent workflow for picking and choosing which assets to associate with which asset grouping campaign. The first thing I want to point out here is this dropdown, skip asset creation. Now there are two reasons you might want to skip asset creation. Number one, you already have the assets in your account. Like I just said, you can create this in a completely separate workflow. So you don't necessarily need to do this in step. Reason two, performance max retail campaigns, which we'll start talking about in episode four, don't require you to upload assets because they'll automatically draw assets from your merchant center account feed. With that being said, we do generally recommend uploading those assets if you do have them because they'll unlock additional opportunities to access different advertising channels and Google can use these assets to create new ads that can better convert customers. So if I were to go in here and I set this to true, now if I head on back to my overview method where there used to be a create assets method, it's no longer there. So we'll go here and we'll select false and head back here, boom, create assets right back in the code. Let's talk about the different asset types we have. So there are five asset types you can currently use with Pmax. Text assets, image assets, YouTube video assets, call to action assets, and media bundles. One of the things you might notice in this create assets method is that I only list create text assets and create image assets. The reason for that is that Pmax campaigns, other than retail campaigns, have a minimum requirement of certain types of assets, and all of those required assets are both text and image assets. Now, if I wanted to add a YouTube video asset, I can just click add here, and it'll add that asset for me. Head back over to the assets method, and you can see create YouTube video assets is here. All right, so now that we know about the different asset types, let's look at an example of actually creating a particular asset. So let's jump into text assets. So if we look at the method here, what we're doing is creating an asset operation. And these will be the same or at least very similar across the different asset types. But when you set the asset, you can see that I set a text asset field with information about that text asset. If I were using an image asset, you can see instead of 
the asset text, I have an image URL. And you can see here, when I set that URL, it's a different method signature. So let's head back on to text assets. Before I actually go ahead and create this text asset, which consists of basically just filling in these form fields, I wanna talk about the different asset types. So if I were to go over to this guide here, you can see those asset requirements that I was talking about just a moment ago. We have different asset types that I just said. Text, image, YouTube video, call to action, media bundle. But we have this second column here, which is the field type. And this breaks down each one of those asset types into sub asset types, so to speak, right? And these more closely correspond to how those assets will be used. So if you think about how you might create an ad, you might create a headline, a long headline, a description, and so forth. Now, when we create these assets for the sake of creating them in our asset library, I don't have to specify the asset field type. We'll do that later when we add the asset to the asset group. Instead, what we're doing is just creating a generic asset of type, text, image, and so forth. And as you can see on the right here, here are those minimum and maximum requirements. And if you head on down, everything past image, no minimum requirements. You're encouraged to do it if you have them because it could probably help convert some customers. In addition, I want to point to the specifications column, which outlines some specifications for the different types of assets, for example, character limits, dimensions for images, and so forth. Now that we know about these different asset field types, let's head back over to the interactive guide. All right, so we're in the interactive guide. Let's head over to text assets. Now, creating a name for an asset isn't always required, especially for text, because those can be identified by the text itself. But the way I've written this entire code example, I'm going to be making use of that. And what I'll do is give the asset a name that starts with the asset field type. For example, maybe I'll go headline. This is a good time to point out throughout this series, I'll be working with my fake business, Devin's Music Mania. We sell musical instruments online and in stores. So I'll make a headline here about one of the product categories that I'll be trying to sell is drums. So we'll call this drums headline. All right, now let's actually insert some text. Let's just say the best drums. All right, now as you can see here, create the text asset operation with the information that I've specified. And I just aggregate those into a list of operations, which I pass to this method, add assets, head over to assets, and you can see at the bottom, this is just a call to create some assets. Pretty simple and straightforward. So what I do wanna point out though, is the reason why I'm using this prefix headline describing the asset field type. Now this isn't something that's required, but I'll be making use of it in the asset group assets video, where I explain how to attach assets to asset groups. And there's lots of different ways to do this, and I'll get into this in that video. But what I'll be doing is performing a search request using this prefix in order to retrieve the assets that I want. Feel free to play around with this interactive guide and create all different types of assets. And by clicking on each one, you'll see the, the method signatures as well as the required inputs for each. All right, so with that, you're now a pro at creating assets. Uh, hopefully you have enough knowledge to go ahead and create your asset library so we can go ahead and start creating our PMAX campaign. Next episode, we'll start learning about that actual Performance Max campaign entity. If you recall from that first episode, that's that bulk mutate request. And I've broken this into a couple of videos, the first of which being our campaign budget and our campaign. So I'll see you in the next episode when we dive in.